Howdy doody, friendos. Today we're talking about Mofra. I got the Eureka set from the Masters of Cinema series, number 240. It actually came in after a week. Like, it was posted, and a week later it came in. Which is practically unheard of, both from things from Zavi, but also just as a general kind of rule of thumb for the past nine months that anything from outside of the country can come in within a week. So that's bloody magical. So yeah, I will show you the set. Um, I haven't fully watched the film. I've gone through snippets of it to look at the uh, the colouring, to look at the visuals as a whole, to listen to the sound design and all that kind of stuff. Um, but first we're going to unbox the set. So of course you have the outside of the set. Uh, nice pink and yellow. I like the color of it. Obviously you have Mofra, the two tw Is that even the twins? Yeah, it is the twins. Uh, you have the twins. You have a bunch of missiles being shot at it. Um, yeah, the regular jazz. Uh, the top is just a continuation of it. The side actually has uh, a difference of it, if I can get out of the way. Um, obviously you have Eureka, you have Mofra, and you have Master Cinemas. You probably can't tell because it's not focusing properly because of course that's just what my camera likes to do. It prefers to focus on the background rather than the foreground. Yeah, so you've got your label of Eureka, you've got Mofra, Master Cinema. It does have a little like polka dot look behind it, which is quite nice. It gives it a nice kind of texture that uh, vibrates with it quite well. Uh, you've got this as a back shot. Um, I don't actually know who that is. I'm... It makes me think it's from the American version because I usually usually they have like an American character uh, in you know the American version of it. Nevertheless, it's an interesting image and it will probably resonate more with me when I actually fully watch the film. You've got your barcode, of course, and you've got your rating contains moderate violence. So let's take off the case. Very thick and sturdy. I like it. It's my it's my favorite type of case. I guess we'll look at this one first, this of course being the uh, Blu-ray, then we'll take a look at the booklet and the poster. So the Blu-ray, I've used the uh, alternative artwork, this is the original theatrical poster. Um, uh, of course, pardon the uh, viewfinder, sorry about that. It's a, a nice poster, I quite like it actually. Um, they're usually, it's usually just as messy. Oh actually, there is that same Japanese guy, he's actually there on the poster, you can See him there. So I guess it's a, probably an iconic shot from the actual film itself. Cool. That's that's good to know. I, I liked it. That's not actually, you know, oh, was our American insert characters done the thing? No, it's actually a dude. Cool. That's nice. Uh, you've got a nice spine to it as well. It's actually more of a reddish color. It says just the same thing. So apologies about the focus. But of course, that stretches around to the back, where you have all of your info and specs. So I'm going to lift that up a little. You can pause it where you want it to, yeah, to get an idea of the specs and everything. And there's your final details with your region code. I believe this is region B only. So probably disappointing to American audiences. Um, unless, of course, you're accustomed to having a region, an all region player, which is probably the best way to go about life in general. Uh, so yeah, this is a 1080 presentation that has both the Japanese and English uh, release versions. I like how they say English and not American. It's probably American, but it might actually be English. Original mono audio presentations, which sound quite nice as well. Isolated music and effects track, which you can listen to separately while you're watching the film. English subtitles, which are just automatically applied. You... I went through it, there's no actual subtitle selection, it just automatically has the English subtitles play, which is interesting, so I guess this isn't really a release for Japanese audiences, they, but they, their region is like, I think their region, are they region A? I think so. So, I guess it doesn't matter. Brand new audio commentary with film historian and writer David Kalak for the Japanese version. Audio commentary with authors and Japanese sci-fi historian uh, historians Steve Rifle and Ed Godjiskivers. Okay, that is uh, not a name I can pronounce in good fa in good faith. So uh, I apologize about that. That's it on the English version. Uh, then there's Kim Newman on Mofra, an interview with critic and author Kim Newman on the history and legacy of Mofra. 
There's a stills gallery, plus a limited edition 60-page collector's booklet featuring essays by Christopher Stewardson and Japanese cinema expert Jasper Sharp, Midnight Eye, uh, a new interview with Scott Chambliss, the production designer on 2019's Godzilla King of Monsters, and an extract from Steve Rifle and Ed Kodionsky's I can't... Yeah, 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 you know, I don't know how to... Um, the, it's an extract from their um, biography on Ishihiro Honda, who uh, did, didn't direct this film, but uh, probably cre- I think he's the guy who created uh, Godzilla, at least did, did the first Godzilla film. I should check my Godzilla Criterion set to, to make sure. No, it's no, but this one says it's a... This one says a film by... Ishiro Honda, so maybe it is a biography about the actual guy, because it says director Inoshihiro Honda, so it's probably, I wonder if that's a spelling mistake, I should, I'm just going to check that up, oh, Ishiro Honda sometimes miscredited in foreign releases as Inoshiro Honda, okay, so it has both of his names in the credits here, which is interesting, and, uh, yeah, he did direct Gojira, so I was right about that. It's not just the fact that his name is Honda and that I recognize that as a car label and I think, hey, Honda is also the guy who directed a lot of Godzilla films. He did actually direct this, which is cool. If I look on the inside, so you get a J card for the actual set itself, which I have started folding up, so you get it as a slip, of course, that you can fold around, which is nice. Um... And that's what the inside looks like. So, of course, you just get the regular artwork uh, that's on the outside of the case. So, if you just get this as a standalone edition, you are still getting that artwork. I just like to flip it around. I also think the pink disc looks quite nice, surrounded by the pink of everything else, rather than having to be the other way around. It just it just looks nicer to me when I open up. I'm like, oh, look, it's nice and pink. Whereas on the outside, it's got red. It's got the original poster. It just it looks nice. I guess I'll show off the poster now. So this is actually a double-sided poster, which is really nice. Uh, good material as well. So you've got a landscape version, which is probably the most iconic image of the Mothra poster, which I believe is the American release. Um, I don't know. I probably ravish, uh, ravishing a universe, a universe for love. It's it's yeah, mightiest monster in all creation. It's probably the American version which is perfectly fine. I actually really like that poster. And of course, to translate, on the other side is the original Japanese poster. So I don't know which one I would actually prefer the hang. I feel like I'd like this one. It's more catchy as a poster. I, I like the look of it more than this one. Japanese posters are all, for these monster movies, are usually the same. Big text, big monster, people, things exploding, usually a depiction from a particular scene. That's just how they do it. I mean, it's the same with a lot of Godzilla films, so I'm pretty much used to it. Um, that doesn't mean it's bad, I'm just saying that that's just the design that they went for, but it's like, hey, look, it tells you what you're going to get, here's the monster's name, here's the monster, and this is what it does, and here are a few of your main characters that you might recognise as particular actors. And then, of course, like it said, you have a... How many pages? 56-page booklet. Yeah. Or was it 60 page booklet? I think it said 60 page, didn't it? Yeah, it's 60 page. Okay, so it says 56 just because it uh, has um, pictures in it as well, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, so you've also got your Blu-ray viewing notes. I'm going backwards even though it's uh, I know it's a Japanese thing, but it's like, yeah. So you've got your original poster, which is really cool. Just a black background, but it still says Masters of Cinemas. It says not for individual sale. It's got a spine to it as well, which just says a Eureka Mothra with the Japanese title next to it and Masters of Cinema. And yeah, you open it up, you've got black and white images. The film is in color. So there's that. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. This is, this is all the stuff talking about um, the actual making of and all the behind the scenes a lot of good stuff a lot of interesting like you got interviews you got all this kind of colored thing i like how it's all colored as well it's uh, got a nice look to it it's got a it's got a dense feel to it as well so it feels like i'm smarter just by holding on to it ha 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 well kind of 
Nevertheless, it slips in beautifully, and that's your whole set. That is the Masters of Cinema Mothra set. Now, again, I've never seen this film, so to be able to actually watch it and question where the f it goes on my shelf, it goes there. To finally actually have it and to be like, look, when they released it, or like put it up for pre-order, I was like, look, I haven't seen the film. I wanted to see at least the original Mothra film. There's a lot of those monster films where before they started like colliding with Godzilla, they'd have their own solo films or even solo trilogies or solo sagas. But then there's whole other creatures like Gamera and stuff like that. But nevertheless, I love Godzilla. And given that Mothra is in a lot of Godzilla films, I feel like I should respect the creation enough to have my own piece of its film landscape. So yeah, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to like, share and subscribe for more. Thank you, of course, for watching. Up there will be my Godzilla video, where I unbox the Criterion Godzilla set, and here will probably be a premium special edition playlist set. I know I've been doing a lot more of those recently rather than film shelf stuff, but all this stuff still goes in the film shelf playlist, so that's just a thing anyway. If you're new to this channel, please feel free to like, sh uh, share and subscribe for more, of course. And um, this is the kind of stuff I do on this channel. I buy things, I unbox it, I talk about films. That's kind of how we do. I like it. It's good stuff. Alrighty. See you next time. Bye.